receiving data, um, they are controlled by the operator. Um, with a job, the uh, system will control when the tools can be uh, used within the job process. And I'll show you what that looks like um, here as we jump into, uh, into the demo screen. So um, when we look at what is the same with the, uh, with the battery tools as with the ported version. So if you've been with us uh, for the uh, other classes that we've had regarding our ported version tool, um, you can see we have 15 different presets. We also have the same tightening strategies. We have torque control and angle monitoring or uh, angle control with torque monitoring. We also have the multi-sequence process. Uh, again, that's the ability to stack presets on top of each other to um, do a one uh, trigger pull event. Uh, we also have the advanced parameters such as being able to do the uh, slow reverse start. Um, we have the angle after torque up, we have the thread engagement um, or the uh, thread cutting feature, um, as well as we can do monitoring functions um, with this. And there is also uh, the software um, that is available. So it would be just a very, very similar to uh, what we showed in the previous class with the software for the CT product. So with that, um, let's talk about what is uh, not the same um, with that. Uh, obviously, the interface um, is different. Uh, we have um, a 10 inch screen um, that we're using here. Uh, and um, the uh, other screen is a little bit uh, smaller, different orientation. Um, we have the ability to have multiple tools uh, to uh, multiple controllers. Um, we also have the um, uh, model function that is in the uh, corded version is now called jobs. And we've talked uh, a little bit about that. Um, there are 16 inputs and 16 outputs available on this, which is eight more uh, for each than on the corded version. Uh, and then each of the battery tools has an integrated barcode scanner built into it. Um, so if we wanted to use uh, the barcodes to be able to uh, pull up a preset or initiate a job um, or do some other data collection functions that we can do with the barcode, um, those are already built into uh, the tools. Uh, the tools themselves on the corded version um, are available in either a transducerized or a, a non-transducerized current control um, setup, or we have the uh, battery tools, which are all uh, transducerized um, tools. So that is uh, kind of what's uh, not the same um, about the system. But again, the same overall functionality is uh, primarily the same. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, we can take a look at the, uh, the system itself. Uh, we'll run through uh, the menu, and then we'll also look at uh, how we can use the tools with and without a job. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the uh, controller itself. And so on here, um, again, this is the, uh, the touchscreen, very similar to the um, EC product. Um, and so uh, right now you can see on the display that I have uh, three tools that are connected to this controller. Um, we have our time date up here, uh, and then we have our different uh, menu functions that are present um, and available to uh, be used. Um, at this point, we can, we can come in and we can look at uh, some information, um, but there's really nothing that we can change um, on this main home screen. And this is what's powered up, or this is what comes on when the system is powered up. So to get into uh, some of the other parameters and programming, we have to log into the system. Um, and so we can do that. Uh, and now it opens up um, a bunch of uh, additional menu items that we can, um, that we can look at. So uh, what's uh, very similar to the EC product um, is going to be our uh, monitoring function. Um, here we have uh, the ability to um, graph a rundown. We can look at the inputs and outputs. Um, but right now, what I need to do is uh, select a tool. So, um, for us to be able to uh, look at a, a graph or a rundown um, of that, we need to go ahead and, uh, and select a tool. And so let's go ahead and do that. Did I accidentally hit the power cord? I think I did. So let's go ahead and Here. Okay, well, we will start from the beginning. <laughs> so 
So as the uh, system powers up here, you can see that it's looking for the, uh, the tools that are on the network. And now we have, uh, again, our uh, tools up here in the corner. So let me power cycle. The tool and by doing that, uh, basically I just removed uh, the battery um, and allowed the, the system then to uh, come up uh, and this was the, or this is now um, the tool, but let me show you how um, I guess we can, we can pair these tools to the controller and you can see now that that particular tool is uh, now on our uh, our network, and right here, which is our um, EPT, or excuse me, yeah, the EPT. And now we can go ahead and we can look at our uh, other tools. So let's power cycle this one. Or let's go ahead and I'll show you how um, we can actually uh, set up the Wi Fi module for that particular tool. So, um, using a, a USB cord, we can plug that in uh, to the side of the unit. Uh, on each tool, uh, we have uh, a USB micro uh, USB port. Um, if we plug this into the system, it's going to uh, tell the tool what network it's on uh, or what the password for the SSID is. Um, if we're using it uh, in other ways, we can go ahead and hit save. Um, and now the tool will be able to communicate with that controller. Um, and so at this point, um, we can come in and we can select uh, the tool that we want to use come back in to our monitoring tab. And we can, just like we do with the uh, EC and ECT product, uh, we can go ahead and we can select from two different channels. We have our torque value uh, on this channel one, and then we can add um, angle, like I've done in all of the other uh, demonstrations. We can hit start, and then we can go ahead and run the tool and this is going to generate our uh, torque uh, curve along with our uh, data from that specific rundown. And so uh, this is very, uh, very similar to what we can do with the system uh, and a, the graph generation that's done on the software where we can come in and we can actually pick a point um, on the graph and we can see the details for that. So a little bit more granular um, to do that. Um, and so that's how we can use the graph function. Um, we have um, our inputs and output function. Um, and there must be something wrong with this controller at the moment. Every time I've gone to the IO tab, um, I've had what appears to be some type of error. So yeah, there is a display error, it appears. All right, we'll try this one more time. Okay. We'll give the uh, tools a uh, little bit of time here to try to rejoin the network. And you can see they're coming online. And now we have all three tools uh, back online. So uh, let's go ahead and move to the system. Um, menu. Uh, again, we have in here our ability to see uh, 
the device information, what firmware we're using, what um, model if we needed to do any upgrades to that. Uh, we can also take a look at how much storage is available on the unit. Um, if we added the additional micro SD card, we can expand that up to another 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Um, we have um, just uh, over eight or so uh, of internal storage here. Um, we come back out to um, our parameter menu. Um, and this is just the same um, as it is with the uh, EC tools. Uh, we have our 15 different presets um, that are accessible here. Uh, because of the screen real estate, we are able to get all of the parameters onto one page. So we can come in and we can uh, take a look at the different uh, profiles that we can use um, for the different uh, settings of the tool. Um, if we make an, a change here um, for this particular tool up here, the 001 tool, uh, it will automatically be updated um, on that. So if I come in, I can change the torque value. Uh, what you can see on here is the limitations of the tool. So our minimum value is set to four. Our maximum is 45. So if we came in and set this to five, it would then um, update that particular tool. What's also interesting about the, um, the tools themselves, uh, they each have their own type of controller functionality. So uh, one tool can have a different set of uh, parameters as around how the controller actually functions. Um, and that could be things like unit of measurement, um, the speed of the tool when it's in reverse. Uh, if we're using a pistol grip tool, do we want the reverse or the forward button to be in a certain orientation? Um, so all of those things can be generated uh, per tool uh, based on the needs for that specific um, tool, even though the, the applications or the requirements may be different um, from the two different tools that are connected to the unit, uh, that would allow us uh, to be able to have that flexibility um, in there. Uh, we have our multi-sequence uh, programming here, multi-sequence A and multi-sequence B. Uh, again, we have 10 steps in here. Uh, and then we have our network uh, information where we can change or update that. Um, we can come in into our uh, settings menu. Um, and this is uh, a really important page. Um, this is where we're going to determine if the tool is going to be used uh, with a job or without a job. And so um, we'll start with without a job first. Um, and then we have a number of different uh, parameters that we can adjust, uh, things like uh, when the, the tool system boots up, is there a certain uh, screen that you'd like it to or a certain um, default start program you'd like it to start in? Um, just a number of different things here uh, that we have. Uh, we can come in and we can uh, program our inputs and outputs. Uh, we have our log function here. Um, so as we are sending uh, data to be captured, we can select which items of that particular uh, data field we would like to see. Um, if there are certain items that aren't necessarily uh, to be used, then we can uh, toggle those off or toggle them on. Um, we also have the ability to add uh, barcodes um, in here. Um, and then we can again look at some of the network settings. And then we have some other advanced uh, functions as far as we could have uh, FTP server automatic um, backup and um, stream out the uh, data there. Um, and we also have system uh, profile here where we have things like the time, the date, uh, what language we're using, um, if we want to do any peer-to-peer um, -peer, uh, sharing of information. Um, and again, that's all um, as it relates to a little bit more advanced functions, but uh, we have quite a bit that we can do um, in the settings menu. So as I mentioned, uh, we're running the operation mode uh, without a job. So if we come over here to the operation button, go ahead and press that. Um, as I uh, run the tools, you can see the 001 tool is providing us data. If I switch to a different tool, now you can see the 005 tool is, is giving us data. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here so you might be able to see that a little better. And then finally, if I switch to uh, another tool, you can see we're getting data there as well. Uh, if I run two tools at the same time, 
um, you see we're constantly uh, retrieving um, the data. Um, and so in this function, the tools um, are working without a job. They're working independently and uh, the operators can uh, go ahead and use the tools uh, for their particular operation. Uh, if we needed to change any programming with that, we could do that um, in the op or in the um, parameter screen uh, and just select which tool we would like to use. So, um, so that is uh, the without a job function. Um, if we come back uh, to the home screen, we'll go into settings and then we'll change the operation mode to with a job and we can come back out. Um, so this gives us uh, the ability to create an assembly process. Uh, and again, this process can have multiple tools. It can have um, different uh, steps within it. So there are fastening steps, there are communication steps. Um, there are uh, a number of different things that we can include in this assembly build. So if I come into the job manager icon, um, you can see uh, our list of uh, tools here, or our list of uh, jobs that we have. Um, and so right now I have one job in the system. Um, it can, the, uh, the system itself can hold up to 1,000 different jobs. Uh, and each job can have up to 256 different steps within it. And if you're using a fastening step within that, we can have up to 99 fastening steps or fastening points in that one step. So um, there's not going to be an issue of uh, running out of available jobs um, for use of the system um, or space for us to do that. So uh, if we were to fully max out this entire um, system with a thousand jobs at 256 steps, um, each step is fastening at uh, 99 points each, we would have over uh, 25 million fastening possibilities uh, for the unit. So um, we can handle uh, pretty much any um, application uh, or any number of steps as long as it's within the parameters of the tools that we're using. So um, if we come in uh, and we want to uh, edit this particular job, so let's take a look at what that is. I can come in um, and I can edit this job. And so uh, this job has three fastenings in it. Um, if we take a look at the first fastening step, uh, excuse me, the first one. Um, so we can do a couple things here. So first we're uh, selecting which tool we're gonna be using. So this is gonna be the EP001 tool. Uh, the number of fastenings we're gonna do is three. And then which preset we're going to use, we're gonna use preset number one. And so down here we have a graphical image of the actual part that we're going to be using um, on the application, which is just uh, an image of the thread block I have here. Um, but what we can do with this is we can add target data to help guide the operator through the assembly process. So if I tap on the screen, um, this brings us into uh, the uh, screen that will allow us to add that target data. Um, and so if I want to say that uh, um, our first fastener is going to be in a different location than it is right now, you can see we're working on screw number one. Uh, it is uh, flashing here. I can just simply grab that and I can move it to the uh, point that we would like that first fastening to uh, take place. We can also change um, the out or the different uh, graphical representations of what we want. So if we want to increase the size of that target, we can. Um, if we want to add a width to that target, we can do that. Uh, if we wanted to change um, the color, um, of that target we could. You can come in and you can manually change the sliders if you want, um, or uh, you can enter in the uh, code data for the RGB channels um, and we could do that as well. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Um, and that can be done for each fastener in this um, step. So we have three different fastenings. If we move to fastener number two, you can see that number two is highlighted now. And if we needed to make an edit to that, we could do that. Um, if we needed to move it to the other side of the uh, screen, we could simply just move this menu over. And now we have access to the image on this side of the, uh, of the screen. So if we like what we've done with these particular edits, we can hit okay. 
Um, and you can see we've got three fastening steps in this, uh, this job. Uh, fastening step number two uses a different tool. And fastening step three, uh, again, uses a different tool. So let's go ahead and we'll go back out. We'll save this. And then we can go um, back out to our operation screen since we have it set to work with the job. Uh, the interface is going to look differently. Um, at this point, we have the ability to open a job. And this function can be done a number of different ways. It can be done like I'm doing it here on the screen. It can also be done via a, a barcode uh, selection. Um, it could be done through the inputs uh, and outputs via a PLC. Um, or we could add another type of um, trigger um, as it relates to a button or uh, something else within the uh, process. But there are a number of different ways that we could queue a particular job to uh, be available to us. And so now you can see that um, we have the um, operation um, on the screen telling us the uh, fastener that needs to be done um, with that. And so uh, at this point, I have access to uh, only one of the three tools that is working. Um, and there's a status light on the tool. Uh, you can see that uh, here. Um, that status light is solid. If I was to try to use one of the other tools that I have here, um, you can see that the status light is blinking, indicating that the tool is disabled. So I can go ahead and run this tool. Once we get a good fastening, um, it does turn uh, green um, or whatever color we would like it to for the uh, assembly within the setup. Now that I've gone through those, that first fastening step, I can then can move on to the second fastening step. to the third and to the fourth one. And now we've moved to the third fastening step, which is the another tool. And now that our job is done, we get a job complete signal uh, and then the uh, job will reset. Uh, and then the operator can uh, continue um, with that particular job or uh, we can have another job selected um, at this point. Um, and so that's what uh, it uh, would look, a job would look like with using the graphical display. Um, basically what we're seeing here is the uh, image um, or the data uh, for fastening step number one. We have a total of three steps. We've done um, zero of those. If I do that without an image, this is what you would see if we get a good rundown. Uh, and now we've moved to the second step within that assembly process. If we need to get back to the image, we just simply hit the full screen uh, and now we're back to the image. So um, that's how we can use uh, the, either with an image or without an image for the job setup. So at this point, let's go ahead and go back to um, our menu. We can then uh, take a look at the actual uh, tool uh, display and what's on um, the tool itself. Uh, so, Let's see here, let me just change one thing here, go back to without a job. Okay, um, and so uh, what you see here um, on the actual display of the tool is we have um, our Wi-Fi signal strength um, up in the upper left corner. We have which preset we're using. We have um, our operation um, with tools in operation mode. Uh, we also have how much battery is left on this tool. We have our torque value uh, that it's set to. Um, and then we have these four little windows uh, down here that will allow us uh, to be able to correspond to the function keys that are below. And so if we wanted to manually change a preset, we could do that. We could just use the up button. This is going to scroll through the different presets that we have. Um, it will basically carousel around. We have our multi-sequence A, our multi-sequence B, and then back to preset one. Uh, again, we can um, use the up or down. Um, it's going to allow us to select which preset we would like to use. Uh, we also have the uh, display button here. This gives us the information regarding um, the uh, IP address of the tool. Uh, talks also has our uh, MAC address, uh, the SSID that we're using, uh, and also information regarding the uh, firmware, the serial number and model of the tool. Um, 
the last one is going to be the mode function. So there are two different uh, power consumption modes for the battery tools. Uh, if the system is in the high power mode, like it is now, uh, we could use, uh, it basically uses um, all uh, 25 volts of the battery. Um, and if, for example, uh, you want to try to extend the life of a battery uh, during uh, the use of it, if you're working within the lower 70% of the torque of that particular tool, then you would uh, be able to use it in the low power mode, which uses 18 volts, uh, then um, extending the power consumption that you would have um, with that. So there are two different energy consumption modes um, to be able to be used with the system. The, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, one battery uh, should last um, around, uh, it should last at least a day or so. Um, we have done testing on it where you can see um, a number of fastings, um, up to uh, 3,000 fastings on one battery. Um, but it may depend, again, on the torque value that's being used. It um, would also depend on the rate at which it's being used. Um, but nevertheless, um, the battery life um, is designed to work um, well outside the time it takes to actually recharge the battery. So um, with the fast charging battery system that we have, you are able to charge a fully depleted battery to fully um, charged within uh, 50 minutes. So under one hour, you would have a fully charged battery um, and you would be ready to go. Uh, and each tool uh, that we supply comes with two batteries um, with that, that purchase. So um, that is uh, a little bit on the display and a little bit on um, how the tool can function with the power mode. Uh, and the different uh, ways that we can change presets and such. So um, at that point, this kind of get, brings us back to um, how we want to use the tool. I just put it into operation mode so we can see um, all of the tools again. Uh, at this point, I can just simply clear the data that we had there, um, but it did not clear it from our internal memory uh, if we have it set to do so. Uh, so with that, I know there was a lot of information there, but um, if anyone has any specific questions or they would like to get a more in-depth uh, in demo for this, uh, we can set up uh, an appointments to uh, do more of a one-on-one -on -one, um, or a, a, a department type uh, setup to be able to demonstrate what this tool can do primarily uh, for your specific uh, need or application. Um, so that is always an opportunity for you to get more information um, about uh, any of our tools, or um, in this case, the EPT uh, transducerized cordless tools. So with that, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to type them into the chat. Uh, we'll have uh, Casey go ahead and bring those up and uh, we can uh, go ahead and answer those for you if you have them. So Dave, I do have one question already. It's from Armando. He says, okay. Um, he wants to know if the controller can connect to multiple tools at the same time dur during a build. Yes, so um, you can have, uh, again, eight different tools uh, being used simultaneously in different uh, locations within the uh, range of the Wi-Fi, um, I guess, but uh, that would be uh, consistent with what uh, we saw here. Um, so I've got one tool that's being used. I have another tool that's being used. And finally, another tool that's being used. The only distinction would be is if we did this within the job format or the assembly build, uh, each of those tools would be able to be used, but they would only be able to be used within the certain step that they are responsible for. So does that make sense? He had to step away, but I think that that will answer his question for now. Um, okay. And then I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, like Dave said, if you guys are interested in getting a more in-depth um, consultation or would like to see this with your specific application, um, you can send us an email. Um, you can email me, actually, um, Casey. Um, I had sent out the reminders for this. If you reply to those emails, I can get you set up with your representative or with Dave um, so that you can get some more information. 
Okay, and then with that, uh, I want to thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Uh, feel free to take a look at our other classes. Uh, and again, if you have any need that you'd like to address um, in a more uh, specific and narrow focus, we can certainly do that for you. So thanks again so much and have a great day.